What's up, everybody? These are the 8.4 notes. We are on this packet. We're going to be on page number 13, pages 13 and 14. Today's learning target is you are going to be able to find angles of elevation and depression. We're going to talk about what those mean. Using trig functions. So we're still using trig functions. We're still using the same knowledge we learned in 8.1 through 8.3, but now we're going to apply it to some real world scenarios. So let's hop right in. Basically, the angle of, an, of elevation is the angle between an observer's line of sight. So like for instance, um, I'm chilling right here. Let's say this is me. I'm chilling, okay? And I'm looking up. Maybe more like I'm right here, okay? I am chilling. That is what I'm seeing. So if I'm looking straight ahead, this is my line of sight. Okay, this is my line of sight. And then somewhere um, over here, this is like a horizontal line. So if I am looking up, if I am looking up, this would be the angle that, that is created. Okay, a horizontal line. If I'm looking up, this is called the angle of elevation. The angle of elevation. Okay. Now the angle of depression is going to be when you're looking down. This is the angle of elevation. This is me looking up. So if this is my line of sight, if I look up, that's the angle that's created. So we're going to either use the angle of elevation to find the measure of something else, or we're going to actually find the angle of elevation. So let's look at a couple examples here. Um, kind of hop right in. Example one. Uh, remember, we're using trig functions still, so let me, maybe let's remind ourselves of those real quick. So, Katoa, if you need a refresher, maybe go watch the other three videos before hopping in today. Okay, so let's take a look. On both of these on this front page, we're going to have to draw some sort of picture. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not an artist, so it's not going to be that great, but I'm going to give it a shot uh, in order to solve it. So the angle of elevation from a rock. All right, let me draw a rock. Here's my rock. On the ground to the top of the building. Okay, so here's a building. I'll draw this building. Okay, the angle of elevation from a rock. Okay, here's the rock. Here's the top of the building. Okay, the angle of elevation from the rock to the top of the building is right here. Okay. Here's the angle of elevation. What is it? It's 52 degrees. Okay? So the angle of elevation is 52 degrees. If the rock, here's the rock, is 125 feet from the base of the building, that means this is going to be 125 feet from the base of the building. Okay? What else do we know? How tall is the building? That's what we're trying to find. So we're trying to find the measure of the, the height of the building. Okay? So we know the angle of elevation. We know this distance, and we're trying to find the tall, the, the height of the building, so I'm going to label that X, okay? You've seen problems like this before. Now, it's, it's a real-world scenario, but kind of the same thing is happening as normal. Like, check it out. Let me draw this off to the side. We have a triangle. The angle of elevation right here is 52 degrees. This is X. This is 125, and we're just trying to find X. Guys, we did that in 8.2. It's the same thing. So let's just do it real quick. If this is my angle, opposite that would be O, opposite. This is my right angle, so opposite that would be my hypotenuse, and this would be adjacent. Okay, we can make a little uh, problem here out of the triangle. So we keep going. Remember H, I'm going to cover up because you see how this side right here is completely empty. I'm going to cover that up. I don't need it. O and A are the two letters we're going to work with. So let's remind ourselves, what do we use O and A with? We use T, so tangent. So let's do tangent to figure out X. 
we'd have tangent of, what's my angle? 52 degrees equals O over A. This is TOA. O over A would be X over 125, okay? If you remember, X is on top, so I'm just gonna multiply those together. X is gonna equal 125 times tangent of 52 degrees. Let's see what we get. 125 times tangent of 52. is 159.993. Okay, we're gonna reduce that. Let's do the nearest tenth. X equals 159.9. That's gonna reduce to actually 160.0, not reduce, it's gonna round to 160.0 because this nine is greater than five, which makes this zero, which makes this 160. So 160.0 feet is how tall the building is, okay? All right, not too shabby. Let's try example two. Very similar situation, you're gonna draw a picture. So let me draw Olivia. Olivia, by the way, there is a typo on this one. So let me go ahead and actually white this out. On your paper, I would just cross this out, do what you gotta do, and I'm gonna rewrite this last sentence. Okay. I'm going to rewrite this entire last sentence so we're on the same page. There is a typo. So it says, Olivia stands on the street and looks at a bird perched on the top of a 60-foot tree. That's all good so far. But this next sentence should say, if Olivia is 15 feet away from the tree, what is the angle of elevation? So here in a second, I'm gonna draw my picture and it'll make more sense. But let's make sure we're on the same page with the question. Okay, we've got our question. Let's draw the picture. We have Olivia, she's standing, she's chilling, okay? She's standing on the tree, street looking at a bird. Oh my goodness, I cannot draw a bird. So maybe like, I'm gonna do my very best to draw a bird like this, maybe. That's my bird, <laughs> doesn't look too bad. That's my bird. And he's on the top of a tree. Okay, that's my bird on top of the tree. How tall is the tree? It is 60 feet tall. Okay, 60 feet. Olivia is 15 feet away from the tree, okay? And we're trying to find what is the angle of elevation. Well, if she is looking up at the tree, this is the angle we're trying to find, right? Okay, so we know that the tree is 60 feet tall. We know she's 15 feet away from the tree, and we're trying to find this angle. All right, let's make, a, let's make a triangle over here, just so we're on the same page. We have 60 feet, we have 15, and we're trying to find X. Guys, you can do this. Let's figure it out. Same thing, we're trying to find an angle now. This is gonna feel like 8.3, okay? Across from the angle, this is our angle, we have O. Across from the right angle is H, and this is A. Hopefully you feel good about labeling that. All right, now that we have this, we're gonna ask ourselves, okay, which one are we gonna use? H is useless again. So we have O and A, which is TOA, tangent. Tangent of X, which is my angle, equals O over A. So 60 over 15, okay? Now here we have a situation where we're looking for the angle measure. We can't put tan of X in the calculator. So hopefully you remember from 8.3, when we have this situation, here's what happens. This becomes x equals the inverse tangent of 60 over 15, okay? Hopefully you remember that from 8.3. When you have a variable next to the trig function, you're gonna end up doing the inverse tangent, okay? So let's do that real quick. I would have trig inverse tangent of 60 over 15. I'm gonna get 75. 0.9638, let's simplify that. Nine is the number, so this is actually gonna do, this is the six is gonna make this a zero, 
which makes this a 76.0. So x equals 76.0 degrees. So Olivia is looking up at the bird at an angle of 76.0 degrees. That's pretty intense, but that's what she's doing. Okay, it's pretty, she's really craning her neck. 76.0, okay? Let's talk about angle of depression. So this is the next page. This is page number uh, 14, page number 14. Angle of depression, very similar. This is an angle between an observer's line of sight. This is the line of sight now. This is the line of sight. So if I'm a man chilling up here and I'm looking down at a hor and this is the horizontal line, okay, the angle of depression is this angle, okay? Now, something that you got to learn now is if this is the angle of depression and this is the angle of elevation, those are actually going to be the same measure. Okay, that might come up in your practice a few times. So when you have an angle of depression and an angle of elevation, these are going to be the same measure. And if you remember, the reason we know that is they are alternate interior angles. Right? You can probably tell that those are alternate interior angles. So anytime they give us the angle of depression, we can also find the angle of elevation. Okay, that's what it said, congruent to the angle of elevation. So we'll talk about that a little bit more detail in one of our problems. So let's look at example three. We got two more. We have a skateboard ramp. This one, they gave us the picture. The skateboard ramp is 25 feet long with a vertical drop of 20 feet. All right, so let's kind of make a picture out of this then. If we know, we're trying to find the angle of depression, this angle, okay? This angle is creating a triangle right here with not a lot of information. So, but here's what we do know. If this is the angle of depression, like for instance, in this picture, this would be the angle of depression. If this is the angle of depression, we know that this angle is actually going to be equal to the angle of elevation right here. Okay? So we can actually find this angle, and that would that would be the same thing as this angle. So we're going to actually try to find this one and go from there. Okay, so in this picture, we could have a triangle. Okay, the height would be 20 feet. We could put it right there. That would be a right angle. This would be 20 feet. The length would be 25, and we would be trying to find this angle right here. Okay, guys, we can do this. Not a big deal. So now that we have our triangle, this is the height, this is the, uh, the length, this is the angle. This would be O hypotenuse adjacent. Okay, what do we know? We have tangent. So TOA, this would be tangent of X equals 20 over 25. We have a situation where we're trying to find an angle, so we're going to have to do inverse tangent. X equals tan negative 1, that's inverse tangent. 20 over 25, let's see what we get when we do that. Inverse tangent, 20 over 25, 38.6598. That would become x equals 38.7 because 5 or greater. So x equals 38.7 degrees. Okay, so what I'm saying, guys, is because this angle right here is 38.7 degrees, this other angle that we were actually trying to find is also 38.7 degrees. Okay, so this is where it comes in handy, where you need to actually use the angle of depression to find the angle of elevation and then go back. Okay, let's try example four. This one's a little bit less tricky. Okay, at the top of a 100-foot tall building, let's draw that. On top of a 100-foot tall building, 100 feet, Nathan watches the start of a parade at an angle of depression of 65 degrees. All right, so Nathan's chilling down here. He's chilling. He is looking at the parade at an angle of 65 degrees. Whoops, my bad. He is not down there, is he? He is at the top of the building. He's chilling up here. He's at the top. 
and he is looking down. So let me draw some some dotted lines. He's looking down. So 65 degrees is actually this angle right here. Okay, that would mean that this angle right here is also the same as this angle, the alternate interior. So I still could have 65 degrees down here. All right, how far away is Nathan from the start of the parade? So if this is the start of the parade, how far away is he? That's what we're trying to find. So let's draw the triangle off to the side. We'd have 100 feet. Then we're trying to find how far away is Nathan from the beginning of the parade. This is 65 degrees, and we're going to solve for x. Okay, so if you need to kind of rewind that, maybe look at that again, you can do so. 100 foot tall building. We're trying to find how far away is Nathan from the start of the parade. This is the angle of depression, which is also the angle of elevation. Remember, those are interchangeable. Okay, so let's do this one real quick. If this is my angle, this is going to be O, H, and A. This is my right angle. Um, H doesn't isn't used, so we'd have tangent of 65 degrees equals O over A. So 100 over X. Okay. X is now on bottom. So if you remember, we just switched those out. We'd get X equals 100 divided by tan 65. Let's see what we get when we get that. 100 divided by tan of 65, we get 46.6308. So how far is he from the start of the parade? He is about 46.6 feet away. Okay. So this would be 46.6 feet from the building to the beginning of the parade. All right, that's about it. It uh, looks like we used a lot of tangents there, but in your practice, you'll use different types. Uh, you're going to do pages 15 through 17, so it's kind of a lot, but you totally got this. Hope you have a great day.